okay, like I said, I'm speaking for North Carolina. Out of 40 very qualified people, you chose the one establishment candidate that bankrupted an entire uh, county's party. You know, uh, uh, the, the Opperman Report listeners, because I know that uh, Nico, a lot of his uh, uh, people have found the show now, and they're listening to the show. But for people who listen to the show all the time, uh, they're familiar with the case of Reverend Ed Pinckney up there in Benton Harbor, Michigan. As a 67-year-old man, okay, who's been an activist his entire life, and he's serving time in prison right now. He's doing two to ten years in prison, where they're harassing him inside the prison now as well. This has not ended. Uh, and his the only crime that this man yeah. was accused of was trying to recall a mayor, and that supposedly there were four signatures on his recall petition that had the incorrect dates on it. And he was t- t- taken to trial, arrested, uh, under you know uh, arms. Uh, taken a trial and convicted over this and he's doing two to ten years in prison and a serious prison too by the way now and here we have this situation here with the yeah, clinton camp yeah and with clinton campaign the whole state of uh arizona uh it was disgraceful people waiting in line for four or five hours tens of thousands of people uh couldn't vote uh they're given the the, the results on on the tv set there when they're one percent of the vote the absentee ballots are coming in. and everybody knows a lot of shenanigans goes on with those absentee ballots <laughs> okay anybody's yeah, been around absolutely. Absolutely. absentee ballots are just, are just the worst I, I i hate to see how many people put in the effort for absentee just a lot of absentee ballots and they just never get seen yeah you know anybody know it well some of them get seen the ones that you know the, the right ones get seen and the wrong ones <laughs> yeah, don't exactly, get seen exactly. Yeah, but as far as election campaign shenanigans go on, absentee ballots is probably one of the worst things you could have, uh, the most vulnerable to abuse. And But here we saw the whole state of Florida, uh, no, of Arizona committing this crime. And we have a, a guy up there in Benton Harbor, Michigan, doing 10 years, 67 years old, you know. God forbid he yeah. dies in prison. <sighs> it's, it's upsetting, man. It's, and what was it, some 1.3 million people that were predicted to vote for Bernie? never made it to the polls. Now, here's a, here's a scary thing. So there's been allegations that, you know, the machines have been tampered with and the results have been, are being flipped. And not only are they being flipped, but they possibly have been flipped numerous in numerous states. So here's the here's deal. If we count the margin of error, Hillary Clinton won Arizona by the exact, the, the exact margin that Bernie was predicted to win after 1% of the voting was reported. Yeah. And also, too, wasn't there something that came out about this uh, with the DNC lawsuit about that database that that company was also involved in the in the in transactions with the Clintons? That's what I that's what I heard. But I do know for a fact that the person who was involved in the, the original database case was did work for Hillary prior to working for Bernie. Oh, brother. Yeah, I mean, there's no way. There's no. Like I said, there's almost. If you're going to hire people like and you are looking like there's no way that you're going to be able to find someone who wasn't working for Hillary in some way, form or fashion in the past. It's, it's sad because, you know, once you start getting that money involved, it's, it's a great thing that Bernie raised so much money. But then people who are running his campaign started think, oh, we can do things with our money that Hillary starts doing. But if Hillary started doing it already, you have to understand that she's already paid the people she needs to pay. And so the only thing you're going to be doing is, 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 is filling up pockets while picking up some people that she's already paid off because those are the resumes you're going to pull up because you're going to try to get the most for your money. And we kind of got away, I think, from doing what, what was putting us in the lead to begin with, which is grassroots. And so that's why in my last few videos I've encouraged people to get back to grassroots. I was like, if, you, if, if, you, if you're like volunteering and they will refuse to give you access to data or refuse to let you canvas, you know, get your own canvassing materials. Look at the phone book. Call people up in your city or your state, and and try to try to do whatever you can. To if you got to go knocking on neighborhoods that you have zero data on, that just might be something that we have to do in this particular election cycle because it's a obviously it's a very different one. But the way we got ahead in the beginning was because of these grassroots movement, because people were making selfless sacrifices, and not because Bernie Sanders had forty million dollars at his expense. Right, and, and if you look forward, it looks like the next ten states all will uh, likely uh, fall into Bernie's lap. Uh, some by closer margins than others, uh, so we can't be discouraged. And if again, like you said too, if we look back at the beginning, um, uh, so much of this campaign, uh, like the Go Bernie website's run by a volunteer. It's not even <laughs> a campaign-run website, yeah. and you could just go on there and start your own event and just just. And, and it's up. It's up in and 24 hours. they encourage hours. it. And they encourage it, too. Yeah, so that's totally grassroots. You can invite people to your home to, to phone bake or, or, or whatever you want to do. Um, 
I tell you what, um, Nico, let's take a commercial break, okay? And we'll be back in about six minutes. All right, fantastic. We'll be right back with more of Nico House, who was from the North Carolina College Students for Bernie and also the other organization, Nico? Uh, uh, Carolina Students for Bernie Sanders at UNC. Okay, and how can people get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you? Um, you can go to my Twitter, which is at Nico, N-I-K-O, C-S-F-B, or you can go to my Facebook. Uh, my political page is Nico D. House as Nico, N-I-K-O, D as in dog, and house as in a house that you live in. Oh, you just, uh, if you Google a Nico, N-I-K-O house, uh, he comes up pretty easily. Uh, so we'll be right, <laughs> <laughs> be right back. I found him, right? We'll be right back after this with more of Nico House. Thank you, brother. Okay. And now a word from our sponsors, Pacific West Bamboo, your premier source for sustainable building material. They provide construction grade and craft grade bamboo material for all your indoor, outdoor, and gardening needs. Uh, contact them for event planning and display building as well. 503-839-8126. Or you go to their new website, PacificWestBamboo.com. Or you can contact them on Facebook at Pacific West Bamboo. That's 503-839-8126. Amanda from Pacific West Bamboo was our first sponsor. Uh, she's been so good to us. Uh, so please support her in return. I want to make everybody aware of our new member section at www.oppermanreport.com. Uh, you can go there and sign up for a monthly, quarterly, or yearly subscription. You can even purchase episodes one by one. Uh, you get full access to brand new original content, new guests, new uncensored interviews, my own investigations and reports, and we're going to be adding uh, sections with documents, images, police reports, uh, either provided by myself or by my guests or for my own investigations, my own reports. Uh, so you can go to oppermanreport.com and you can sign up there tonight. You can start listening tonight. Straw Man. I want to mention Straw Man. Strawman is a band uh, out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, they're good friends of the Opperman Report. Uh, they're a trio of guys who share the same mindset uh, most of us here do, and they put that energy into their words and music. Uh, so check them out at uh, strawmanmusic.com and drop them a line uh, to let them know that you heard them here on the Opperman Report. Uh, we'll be doing a, an interview with Sean Duffy soon. You can get an autographed copy of my book, how to succeed as a private investigator by visiting my PI website, emailrevealer.com. We also offer a computer and cell phone forensics. We can recover deleted text messages to uncover infidelity. Uh, we, can, uh, we offer asset searches, locates, email tracing, background reports, and we can even trace your spouse's email address back to internet dating websites to catch them cheating online. You can reach us at 800-572-572. 9762, or you can email me at emailrevealer at aol.com. New World Mexican Women. Everyone loves the New World Mexican Women and their, their line of fine, handcrafted, authentic ju Mexican jewelry of stone mosaic and abalene stone inlay. In their first book titled New World Mexican Women, available on lulu.com, uh, they teach you how to make this jewelry. And they have a collection of love letters to their men from their hometown that have immigrated to the United States to find work. Uh, they have also published a new book entitled Azucina to the Rodeo. It's about a young girl that falls in love with a rodeo bull rider and she runs away with him uh, without telling her family. You can find the New World Mexican Women by Googling New World Mexican Women. And you can ask them about uh, their deals on wholesaling, their fine jewelry, and all of the other projects that they have going on. Uh, if you'd like to have your business or website advertised here and promoted all over the world on dozens of stations every day, give us a call at 800-572-9762 or email oppermanreport at gmail.com. And now back to our show.
Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Hey, don't forget to check out our GoFundMe at front slash Opperman Report. Uh, we're here with uh, Nico House, and uh, he's updating us on what the situation going on here with this, uh, I guess you call it the campaign shenanigans or dirty tricks or, or outright fraud going on here with the uh, Hillary Clinton campaign. So, Nico, um, what else can, can you update us on? What else have you found? Um, I mean, man, it's just it's a lot <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, the the Ryan Hughes was the most recent thing, um, but I've just been getting contact contacted by just volunteers and staffers, former national coordinators, uh, just a lot of different people essentially saying the same thing that we have been confirming. I remember you were telling me off off the air the other day that you've been trying to reach out to Bernie Sanders campaign and you had to essentially be like, hey, like, you know. Do I have to like write a story or something before you can pay attention to me or you know And it was the same situation with the young Turks. I'm sure you've heard they've had been reaching out to Bernie Sanders campaign And Bernie Sanders is not really the type to turn down publicity um, Same thing that happened with uh, uh, Tim black another radio host he had constantly been work, uh, reaching out to Bernie Sanders campaign I think he has a total of over 2 million views cumulatively he gets about 25,000 views uh, to, to, to 30,000 views in a day uh, depending on what new what outlet he's using and and once again no response back to him either you know um, I mean I know just from from Bernie's campaign and being being part of it and tracking it that at any any time Bernie has a chance to get some extra publicity he definitely welcomes it especially if you know you're a, you're a fellow progressive and if, you, if you've always been an advocate of this campaign which many many radio hosts I know have yeah yeah, so, yeah there's definitely some odd stuff going on there um, with as far as that goes it's just very unusual yeah. no other campaign is like that every other campaign wants to get their events you know and, there's and no they get publicity man even if it's a 10 minute you know little excerpt yeah yeah you know what it's, you're right it's just way too suspicious because uh, every other campaign you know they give you the they, they even have a button on their website for press and for media to contact them through and uh, it's just very difficult and uh, we tried to get over to san diego utah or um arizona last week yeah and we couldn't find a contact person anywhere yeah which is ridiculous in all three states you try to reach out to hillary's campaign you can have her in your show in 0.5 seconds well the problem with hillary is, is yeah cause, and we even talked about this off the air too and we covered her campaign yeah. over here the, half the place was uh these union guys from out of state didn't even know what they were doing there uh, yeah exactly and, but but the, the problem too is you get the mainstream media like msnbc and cnn that they're not reporting this stuff on top uh, and, and they were showing a Hillary speech yeah. the other day. I think it was from Idaho. She had maybe 100 people in that audience, you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And we don't even know how many of those were paid to be there. Right, I mean, right. just the sheer numbers are not adding up. They're not adding. <laughs> people say, hey, well, just because they, people, these people go out to rallies doesn't mean that they're going to go out and vote. And it's, that's a pretty weak argument. You don't show up and stand in line for hours to go to a man's rally not to vote for him. Right, and especially when you talk, when, you're, you're talking about in Arizona was either Arizona or maybe Washington, but I think it might have been both. In one state, you have thirty five thousand people show up to a rally, two hundred thousand people vote, and you still get beat. Yeah. You're trying to tell me that thirty five thousand people showed up, two hundred thousand people show up to that doesn't even make any mathematical sense. So you that would mean every single person in his rally had to vote, and everybody who didn't go that got a chance to vote didn't vote for him. Well, it, well, yeah. Well, even Bernie came out and said that what went on in uh, Arizona was a disgrace. You yeah, know? I, I, I wish he would be a little bit more forceful about, well, you know, exactly what went on. Because uh, I think he has to. I think he he's has to. He's doing what he he has to do with without the the exact facts, you know, right in front of him, right then and there. Um, he doesn't want to seem to be like seem to be like he's blaming anything else other than like just the campaign for not achieving his goals. And so I can understand because it looks it looks weak as far as in the political realm. Yeah, I know what uh, you're saying, but but way back in Iowa, right away in Iowa, there was a lot of shenanigans that went on in Iowa. And, yeah, right away. Yeah, and, absolutely. And the the press plane, they cornered them on the plane and they said, "Hey, you're going to do anything about this?" And they said, "No, I'm going to go forward." And it seems like it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it would be a little bit harder to prove to prove Iowa, if, especially because at the time it was only an isolated incident. Right. Um, it wasn't really that hard to be 100% honest with you. The caucus situation was just horrible. I mean, people who were in the caucuses were telling us, like, yeah, this, this is just a bad day. It was, I mean, they're, I think they're actually cur currently um, 
still counting in Iowa because they still don't know what exactly <laughs> the numbers were. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. The whole caucus thing is ridiculous.